Welcome back to Theory Thursday. Um, hope this is a short one because a lot of this exercise um, for you high schools is review. Um, we just covered that because we just did the circle of fifths. And then we just did whole steps and half steps. And here we are again just doing a little bit more practice and identifying the circle of fifths and practicing the whole steps and half steps. So the first thing that you have on this lovely worksheet here is more of identifying scales and more of drawing scales. The first thing you have to do is draw the dots on the keyboard and then write for each of the notes of the major scale. Now, again, how do we find the major scale? On your chart, it gives you uh, nice little numbers for note one, and then in order to get to note one, you need to go up a whole step to get to note two, and then in order to get from note two to three, you have to go up another whole step, and then get from note three to note four, it's a half step. In order to get from note four to note five, it's a whole step. In order to get from five to six, it's a whole step. In order to get from six to seven, it's a whole step. And then in order to get from seven to the octave, or seven to eight, that's another half step. Whole, whole half, whole, whole, whole half. That is the basis of forming major scales if all you are given is a root note or the first note of the scale. So for example, we're looking at the first thing that you have on the front page. You have draw dots on the following keyboards for each note of the major scale. So for example, the one note starts on an E, okay? First note starts on an E. Z. Let me hold the keyboard. Z. So, here you are, E. You need to go up a whole step. Ready? One, two. Boom. All right, so now you know note two. Then you need to find note three. Another whole step. One, two. Now you need to find note four. It's just a half step. Boom. Note five, whole step. Note six, whole step. Note seven, whole step. And then note eight. I messed up. Hold on. Hold my rag. Let's look at what I did there. For those of you that were streaming that at the computer from the beginning, I messed up. For those of you that know me, that's a bad sign. Okay. Sorry about this. I'm going to fix this right quick. Let's try this again now that we have an actual keyboard. Not one that uses the P. Garbage. Okay? So we start at E. With E. Go up a whole step. Okay. Whole step, ready? One, two. Go up another whole step to get note three. One, two. Another whole step. No, this is a half step now. Note four. Then we go up another whole step. One, two. Another whole step. One, two. Another whole step. One, two. And then we do a half step. Here you go from E to E. Okay, then do the same thing for C sharp. All right, now if you flip over to the next page, we just basically have more practice, all right? First thing you need to do on the next page is you need to basically write the whole whole half pattern in exercise one. Excuse me, in exercise one, in question one. I'm stupid. In question one, on the next page, on page 41, if it's in the bottom right corner, is you need to basically write this pattern. Let's see where the marker is. I should not buy the board. You basically write this pattern. That's the answer. Okay. You're welcome. You should be free to play. None of you should get that wrong. If you do, you haven't been doing the homework. Anyway. Then number two, it's the same thing that's on the first page. They're giving you um, first note on the keyboard, and you are supposed to then fill it out by using this pattern. Ta-da. Um, now for number three, it says you then have to build the scale. Same thing. They're just not giving you the dot to start. Um, they're just saying start an A scale, okay? We worked on the keyboard so much that we know, and we have the groupings of twos and threes, so we know that when we start with a grouping of three, we have F, G, and A, okay? So you need to find A, and then they need to follow the pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and build the scale. But for sake of practice, and I'm not just going to give you this answer, we're going to practice it, okay? Let's try using another scale. We are going to do this G scale, the G scale, okay? So, first things first, we need to find G, okay? Again, there's two ways to do with it. You can go find groups of twos and threes. So here's a group of three. So we know that this group, on the first group of three, we know all the way on the left, F. So we know that's G. And 
if you are confused or you have a keyboard where just if you do start off with the two, you know that this is C, the one on the far left is C, the one in the middle is D, the one on the right is E. So you can either go E, F, G. Either way, this is G. Okay? Well, this stinks. Dud marker. Let's see if I can make this up. Probably can't. Okay. So the trash can's over there. Nope, definitely missed. Definitely missed. This one going? Hey, this one works. So we know G, okay? Once you know G, you instantly know the eighth note, okay? So we gotta find G again. So G, boom, G. So we know we gotta get from here to here, okay? Here to here. Now all we gotta do is we gotta follow the pattern, okay? First things first. We have to go to get note two. We need to go up a whole step. So, okay, ready? Start right here, ready? One, two. That's a whole step. Okay. We need to go up another whole step. Ready? One, two. Okay. Now for note four, we just need to go up a half step. Ready? Boom. Right there. For note five, we have to go up a whole step. Boom, boom. There's a whole step. Note six, another whole step. Boom, boom. Note seven, another whole step. Boom, boom. Another whole step. Then you have to go up just another half step to get there. Okay? Now we know we have to go to this marker. Okay? So that's number three. Now, the next thing is you get to have some fun creating your own circle of fifths. So the exercise and that worksheet that I gave you before we went on break, the one that you all went ah! and freaked out over, yeah, you're going to make one of those, but not as in detail and not as complicated. So basically, what you do is you're going to have a circle, a lovely circle here. Lovely circle. And what's your first? Son of a biscuit. Oh. Okay. So a lovely circle here. First thing you're going to do is you're going to draw um, out four lines. Okay? North, south, east, west. If you think about it as a clock, as a clock, noon, three, six, and nine. Okay? So, three lines. Four lines. I'm dumb. I can count. One, two, three, four. Okay? Next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw two lines in between. So, right here. You're essentially drawing a clock. Okay? So, two more lines. Right here. I'm going to use purple. Two more lines right here. Here's 10 o'clock. Here's 11 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Here's 2 o'clock. 4 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 6 and 7 o'clock. And 8 o'clock. Okay? Once you have that down, you start filling it in. Okay? If you actually just read the instructions, the answers are given to you pretty much. So if you just follow the instructions, look at the diagrams. They give you the answers, okay? All right. But then when you flip over to the next page, and I encourage you all to do this blind and not cheat, um, on page 47 in the bottom right corner, it asks you, what is the saying for memorizing the sharp keys on the circle of fifths? Um, which the sharp keys are the ones that go... Sharp keys. Man. See, part of me misses my chalkboard because it's a lot easier like pulling notes and stuff like this. Took forever. Okay, so the sharp keys go this way, adding sharps. Okay, you start at C, and then you add sharps. One for each tick. So this should have one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, four sharps, five sharps, six sharps, and then seven sharps. Okay. All right. And then when you go this way, you're adding flat. Now remember in here, there are some of them that overlap. They're enharmonically equal. They're in, they're in harmonic equivalents. I 
fancy word for saying they're inharmonically equal. Another fancy word for saying that they're the same. Please mark both on your circle. So F sharp and G flat are the same. Um, F sharp and G flat are the same. Son of a biscuit. F sharp and G flat, C flat and B natural, D flat and C sharp. Yeah, those three. Please mark those and show that they're in harmonic. Just follow along in the diagram. It helps you practically get, actually get to the answer. Okay? So this direction, you add sharps going around. This direction, you add flats. Okay? Then there's the three at the bottom here that are in harmonic. All right? It asks you to memorize, though, saying. So how do we know what? How do we know the keys for the sharp side? On the previous worksheet, um, it gave them to you uh, when it asked you just to basically write this phrases on one of them. I actually have the old worksheet right here. That scares you. I'm sorry. So the phrase for memorizing the sharp signs, that's going this way. Please listen to me carefully. Giant dogs always eat before furry cats. Excuse me. Giant dogs always eat before furry cats. Now, furry, F, and cats, C, those are F sharp and C sharp. So it's just a way, it's not perfect, but it helps you remember. So remember that. When you get to furry, F, it's F sharp. And then whenever you get to C, cats, it's C sharp. But the phrase is great big dogs always eat before furry cats. That's for the sharps, okay? And for the flats, going this way, you have five big elephants are dragging garbage cans. Five big elephants are dragging five big elephants are dragging garbage cans. And for all of the flat keys, except for F, you're going to just have to remember it. You're going to have to remember this. In the flat keys, there's going to be flat in their key name, except for F. F is just going to be F. Okay? F is F. Just like C is C. Now, there's a C sharp and a C flat. But this C, where everything starts, is just C. It's not C natural. It's just C. Whereas, and the same thing with this F, the first flat, is just F. Okay, just got to remember that. Five big elephants are dragging garbage cans, okay? Then there's a little review on it where it says, write the saying for memorizing the lines on the treble clef. Write the word for memorizing the space on the treble clef. Write the saying for memorizing the lines of the bass clef. Write the, sp write the saying for memorizing these spaces on the bass clef, okay? You guys fill that out. You guys are smart, okay? Then we go on to your last page of this lovely assignment. And it talks more about writing scales. Okay, the reason why I had you build the keyboard is so you had a bit of, I taught you the keyboard is so you had a way to help visualize it. Okay, now we can put it into practice in terms of reading music. Okay, so basically your last page that you have to do is all about building scales. Okay, all about building scales. It actually in the example it actually helps provide there is a keyboard in the top um, right corner um, for reference for you guys. Okay, so but let's practice this a little bit. All right, so ignore this, but we're going to, we are going to write our own scale and we're going to figure it out. So I am going to pick, let's pick, let's see, you have to do B and E flat. So let's pick, let's pick G flat. We're going to do G flat. And then we are going to do E. Okay. Now, the nice thing about scales, especially eight note scales, as there are other scales, the nice thing about eight note scales is that you automatically know if you know the first note, you know the eighth note. Okay? So, we have note one, G flat is also going to be the eighth note, because 
It's an octave. B flat. Okay? Same thing. E to E. Okay? Now we build the scale. Okay? So first things first, we have to do is you either visualize the keyboard or you visualize the sharps and flats in between. So I'm just going to use the keyboard because it's here. Okay, so let's start with G flat. All right, we're gonna start with G flat. All right, so G. If you don't know where, if you can't remember where G flat is, find G. I'm gonna do the G scale and go a half step to the left, half step to the left to this key for G flat and F sharp or anharmonic. So we're right in the G flat scale, not the F sharp scale. Explain why that's important in a second. Okay, we're right in the G flat scale. Okay, so we know it's here. This is our starting note, right? So now we plug in that pattern. So we need to go up a whole step. Ready? So pause it right now. I'm going to stop right there. Pause it right now. Try and figure this out. Okay? Did you pause it? Did you? Did you? You just want me to give you the answers, don't you? I'm going to because I don't want this video to last too long. It's already approaching on 20 minutes. Okay. Let's do this. Okay? So we have G flat. Boom. We need to go up a whole step, right? That's the next thing about. So ready? One, two. Okay? We're still in flat. Okay? Don't write G flat and then write G sharp. That's confusing. If you are in a flat key, you write flat keys. You don't mix. Okay? You don't mix. So this is A flat. A flat. All right, now we need to go up another whole step. This computer's going to sleep. Wake up. Now we need to go up another whole step. Boom, boom. B flat. Okay? B flat. Now we need to just go up a half step. Okay? Boom. All right? This is normally B. But because in our scale, we already have a B, we need to use the next letter. So it's going to be C something. Okay, so this is C. So we need to say B, but we need to use the we need to use the letter C. So remember, and harmonically, B is equal to C flat. Okay, C flat. Now we go up another whole step, going to the fifth note. So here we are, one. Okay, now we keep going. D flat. Okay. D flat. Okay. We go up A another whole step. Boom, boom. E flat. Now I go up another whole step. Boom, boom. No need to write a flat there. It's just F. That is your G flat major scale okay so that's one example that's on the flat side now let's talk about the sharp side same deal except you're just going to use sharps now all right so we're making the e major scale first thing we got to find is e okay boom boom here's e right here right here all right so let's plug in plug in the pattern so here's e whole set one, two, F sharp. There, I gave you a head start. Okay, pause the video again and try and solve it on your own. Did you pause it? Am I just wasting my breath? No, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to learn this. I'm just giving you a hard time. If you didn't pause it, you're lost. Okay, I'm trying to do this to help you. All right, so pause it, take the time, learn about it. All right, and then when you're done, go ahead and pause it, and then I'll give you the answers. Let's do it. Okay, so we already give you F sharp, all right? So I've already given you the first whole step. All right, now we need to go up another whole step. So boom, boom, okay? G sharp. Okay, now we need to find note four. You just need to go up one, a half step. You just need to go up a half step. Ready? Boom, A. 
Okay. Now I'm gonna need you to go over another whole step. Okay, ready? One, two. B. Okay, another whole step. Boom, boom, C sharp. Another whole step. Boom, boom. D sharp. That's really far away. And then another half step above D sharp to D. I know, that's a really awkward space. I'm sorry. I wrote these closer together than I did up here. Okay? That's how you get the E major scale. Remember, don't mix sharps and flats. Okay? If you're in a flat key, you're keeping it flat. Don't repeat letters. Okay? Like we talked about up here. We already had B flat, and we needed to go up a half step. Or C flat. Here's C flat. We already had B flat, and we just needed to go up a half step. You need to move on to the next letter, which would be C, and then the enharmonic equivalent to C flat is B. You need to keep going with the letters. Don't do like three Bs and stuff like that. And don't mix sharps and flats. Okay? You have two scales to write and to number the scales and all of that jazz. Good luck. To do next Thursday, the 12th of November. Sure, 12th, the 12th. All right. Peace.